Okay, so here's where I believe we left off. Let's take a look at this transformation. Um, this is about the worst of the transformations that you could sort of be hit with as far as, you know, expecting things to do. There are no reflections here, but basically I'm saying it's the worst because there's about four different things you're going to need to handle in this problem. So that's what we're going to do to start is let's figure out what those four things are. I can do a better job of that there. Okay, so at this stage, the order is not particularly important. You can just tell me what you see, and I'll put it into our list. What do you see? No reflections. No reflections. Okay. What else do you see? There's an expansion. Sure. Which one do you want to? Vertical, horizontal? Both. Okay. Vertical stretch is two, and horizontal is also two. And translations? Up one, right one. All right. So honestly, this is the way that you will make the least amount of mistakes. This is how I'm going to start this uh, problem. What I'm going to do is take each point, and I'm going to make a little sort of table. So there's the point negative 2, 0. And there's no reflection, so I have nothing to do in the first line. But I do have to expand it vertically by 2 which means multiplying 0 by 2, well, not that exciting, but I would multiply the y-coordinate by 2. And then here I'd multiply the x-coordinate by 2. And then finally, if I move right by 1, and I move up by 1. Okay. That's where I'll find the point on the new graph is at negative 3 and positive 1. So that takes me all those steps to walk through, but generally people make less mistakes. The other way we could write this is if we make a map of it. So if I just had the point x, y, and I walk through this the same way, then I'll have a little formula so I can map all the points in one shot. I don't have to do this table. But I'll tell you, if you're one that's prone to common or careless mistakes like I am, I don't recommend this for tests and quizzes, okay? But I'll show you, it goes like this. No reflections, it's the same point. If I'm going to double vertically and horizontally, I'm now at the point 2x, 2y. And then if I move it right by 1, and then move it up by 1, that's the final map that I get. So this map will be able to put any point on the graph, show me the new coordinates. So let's try this one. This is the point negative 1, negative 1. If I do the mapping, it's going to go to 2 times negative 1 plus 1. Oops. And 2 times, just so it happens that they're the same, negative 1 plus 1. So I end up at... Well, funny enough, I end up right there. What would you call that? Good, yeah. It didn't actually change after all that. So this would be an invariant point. Okay. So now I only, because of that little formula I have here, I only had to do one, one you know, set of calculations. But there's nothing wrong with doing this. That's still my preference when I do it. If it counts, that's my preference. Okay. Uh, I can see a bit of a pattern in this graph, so I'm going to go back and use that. So I can see that pattern there. That's how I just got that. Um, oops. And of course, I got the wrong dot. It would have been this dot. Um, but I'll do, uh, let's do one more here at 1, 1 and figure out where 1, 1 is. Okay, so hands up. You prefer if I do step by step? Okay, hands up, you prefer that I just use the mapping. Okay, so I'll use the mapping. So we're at the point 1, 1. And to use the mapping, 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. So we are now at the point 3, 3. Okay. And this point here is at 2, 0. So 2, 0 will become... 5, 1. 
Okay, so twice as wide, twice as long, one to the right, one up. Now it's up to you which pr you prefer to do, but again, be careful. This is a very typical type of, this is about as vanilla as it gets. I expect you to be able to reproduce that kind of combination for me. I would hope if I gave this to you on your unit test or your quiz, that that would feel like we've practiced this one. There's no, no, nothing strange about it. Okay, uh, so can we move on from this? Yeah, great. Okay. So I'll have you guys try this one. I'll catch up to you, okay? See what you can do to it. Okay, so you might not be there yet, but maybe you catch up if you're, if you're not. Otherwise, maybe you're just checking over against what I've got here. Um, so I, what I first I started off doing was over here on the left was I did my, my English. I needed to say what's happening. So looking at this transformation, it's a mess. Before I start, I'm going to rewrite it, and I'm going to factor what's inside the brackets. So it looks like this in standard form. It's easier for me to discuss the transformations. So what's happened? There's a reflection in the y-axis. There's a vertical stretch factor of a half, meaning it's half as tall. And it's moved right one and up one. OK? So that's the description. Now I need to move each point that way. So my key points looking at this graph, I've identified them here in red. So all my key points then got moved. I decided to use the map since that's what people asked for last time. And this is the map that I came up with. Let me just, uh, who decided to go with a map when they did this problem? Can I see? Okay, and who decided to do them step by step with a, okay. So for the, those of you going step by step, let me just quickly, this is, I would have done something like this. I would have gone, um, I'm sure you probably figured this out, but just in case. I would go like this and put my point, um, what is it, four, what's the coordinate? Negative four, sorry, ne negative three, negative two. So at each step, I would change it, reflect it in the y-axis, then vertically by a half, then move it right one, and then move it up one. So we end up at the same point. You can just fill in the table, put your points up here, and put your transformations down here. That's a good way to organize. OK, so I'll leave that there just for a minute. Does anybody need a chance to look this over? OK, I'll just give you a minute there. OK, so now, now hopefully you can take a graph and transform it. We're going to practice some more, but hopefully you're at that point where you feel like you can look at the function notation and move the graph around. But we also want to be able to take a look at what's happened and describe that transformation. So when you see this, this is a good starting point that I recommend you always do, is to start with where you know and what you know so far is that I recommend you use these, uh, these pieces when you think about transformations. So while you're brainstorming, you can take them in any order you want. But right now, we need to know, what do you think? Has there been any reflections? Has there been any expansions, compressions, translations? So what do you think? Yeah. So whoever did this graph, the first step they would have done, like us, they would have probably done a reflection first. Right? So that's the way we want to think about it. Let's walk through it like they did so we can figure out what they would have done. So there is a reflection. How do you think the reflections happened? Good. So x-axis reflection. Now what I'm actually going to do is draw the x-axis reflection. And this doesn't have to be you know, uh, a masterpiece, but enough that we can then talk about the graph. So I'm not looking at my black graph anymore. I'm looking at the blue graph because the blue graph it's tracing the steps of the person who did it before me, right? So what would have happened next to the blue graph? Has it been like stretched, shrunk? No. One way you can check is if you, you know, measure it out. Go this distance versus this distance. This distance versus this distance. No changes, so we can leave it alone. But clearly it's been moved, right? So pick a point on the graph. If I pick this one, 
it's ended up over here. So this point, which is at negative 1, negative 1, has been mapped to 2, 0. Can somebody tell me what they did to, to get there? Right 3 up 1. Yeah, sounds good to me. So now I know all the pieces, and I know the order that they've put them in. So all I can do now is write it up as a function. Okay, so if it was a y-axis reflection, sorry, x-axis reflection, it's going to be f of negative x minus 3 plus 1. So use RECT and walk through the steps like they would have, and I really recommend that you do a quick sketch each time so that you can use your newest picture to compare it against the one you're, you're going to. So you against, or sorry, you together with a partner, um, discuss, see what you can come up with. This one's going to be trickier. You've got reflections, expansions, compressions. You've got a bunch of things in the mix here. Okay, so see how you do. What's the function? How is it transformed? Sorry, yeah, you're right. Did I, I think I said y-axis by mistake, so it should have been negative on the outside. Thank you. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Yes. I was just testing you. Okay, so looking at my choices here, I've got uh, reflection because I can see this graph must have been flipped around to get that shape. So this is the first graph I'm going to look at. Now if I sort of picture the red one against it, I can see it had that y-axis reflection. Okay. okay, now I'm going to compare the red graph and I'm looking for expansions or compressions. If I want to know for sure, you know, if you're not quite positive about it, this graph here, it's five units long. This graph here is two and a half units long. Whereas the height is four, and the height of this one, it's still four. So nothing happened vertically, but I know that the horizontal stretch factor is a half. Okay. Now, one of the discussions I had was that um, it, it can be confusing because sometimes we flip the X stuff around. But whenever I'm talking horizontal stretch factor, I actually mean it as I say it. It's the English form of it. That's why it's nice to talk in those terms. When you say horizontal stretch factor, I know you mean this is what happened to it. It's not the number that I'm going to put into it. It doesn't look like this. That doesn't happen, right? So that's where the confusion comes up for some people is I'm not talking about the number inside here. I'm talking about what physically happened to the graph. We'll worry about turning it into the function notation later. Okay. Um, so the last thing I got to look for is translations. But you don't want to look for translations because you might like say, oh, where's this point? That's not the point you're looking for. Because the point we're talking about was shrunk by a half. So this is the graph when it's got um, half the width. It would look like uh, the green graph. So it's this green graph that I'm going to compare to see how far did it move. So here's the point, and it ends up right here. This is why, like I'm saying, every time you find a transformation, do a quick sketch to help you figure out what's happened in the next step. It's too hard to do it all at once in your head. I've never had any success myself that way. So this one went from negative 1, 0, and it's now ended up here at negative 1, um, 3. So it had to go up by 3. So now that I've sorted out what's happened in English, and I know the order that it's happened, I can write this out as um, f of negative for the y-axis reflection, horizontal stretch factor. So I'll put a 2 there. And yeah, nothing happens horizontally to move it left or right. So it should look like that. Here, I'll write a nicer copy of it here. f of negative 2x plus 3. Okay? 
So I know that's something we'll need to practice. There's some more ones to look, look at that in the homework as well as the uh, um, review stuff we're going to talk about tomorrow. So this is part of that question that Leo had earlier, um, 10C, you know, matching up the two functions. So what I'll do is I'm going to give you guys a heads up that uh, I do want to switch, switch lessons since this was catch up. So if you guys want to spend about five minutes, maybe a little longer if I see that we need it, Try those questions in part uh, question number 10. They, they line up to this from your textbook, okay? So take a look at question number 10 from the homework.